Joining us this morning, former PIMCO chief economist Paul McCulley is with us, now an adjunct professor at Georgetown University. Paul, great to see you. So we got a sub uh, five print. Uh, we've got inflation. We're watching credit. We're watching the debt ceiling. Uh, how does that entire potpourri change at least the bias right now? Well, I think the inflation data tell us that the disinflationary train keeps moving down the track. Not as fast as many people would like, but it's actually in train. Uh, and I think it's good news. Um, and I think it reinforces the proposition that uh, the Fed is now going to pause at the next meeting. Uh, we actually have uh, the policy rate uh, above the year-over-year -year headline inflation rate. So we have real interest rates. The inflation train is moving in the right direction. So I think the overall message of the Fed is going to shift from higher for longer to high for longer. Drop the ER, it's going to be high for longer. And that's really what they're pushing back on is our expectations in the market that they're going to ease. But they're not pushing the notion that the peak rate's going to be higher. Is there danger in pulling in Australia where you sort of convey a pause and then you hike again? I don't think that Chair Powell wants to do that. And I think that's one of the big reasons that they're so hesitant uh, to actually do a pause uh, because stopping and starting is not something they want to do. Uh, so I think they're going to sound uh, quite hawkish um, uh, until uh, they got a lot of clean uh, readings uh, that uh, we really have reached uh, where we want to be. Uh, so I don't think they want to st stop and start. The problem is, Paul, is that if they pause or whatever they're doing now, what, what they're saying is data dependence. And what that means is the market gets to choose. That, that's why the market is priced in cuts. Because they're saying they're data dependent, and so the market then takes that as a, a way, a, a green light to ease financial conditions, and it makes their whole fight on inflation more challenging. Like, he's not actually hawkish. It, 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 it's, it's not an easy thing for them to communicate. It really isn't. Uh, the Fed knows that the marketplace is expecting uh, that they're going to be easing down the road. Uh, in fact, John Williams mentioned that to you yesterday. Uh, he just doesn't want it to be on the agenda uh, for this year, uh, that if they're successful in bringing inflation down uh, to the three handle, then it means real interest rates are getting even tighter. So I think it's a matter of timing, and they're going to keep talking hawkishly about the notion, yes, we will ease in the fullness of time, but time ain't full yet. I think that's the core message. Hey, Paul, on the debt ceiling, it was interesting to hear Bill Gross this week, uh, and not, uh, not too far away, Libby Cantrell has consistently said, by the debt ceiling, this will get worked out, there will be drama, but they're not going to let this uh, fall into the abyss. What do you make of that? I mean, is, that is it Pollyanna, or are they really just looking at what, what history's taught us? I think it's history and basic common sense. Uh, Warren Buffett has said the same thing. I think he said that with Becky uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and that we're not stupid enough, to put it bluntly, as a country uh, default on our debt. Uh, but we are silly enough uh, to play the game to the 11th hour. Uh, so I think that we will uh, get past this. But it's going to be a very noisy period. Uh, and I've been around for a long time, and this is one of the noisier uh, episodes uh, that I've experienced. That's probably true with you as well.